Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Ruth chapter 2. We'll be looking at verse 3 this lesson, but before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we continue here in verse <clears throat> 3, it says in verse 2, last lesson, that Ruth uh, said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and glean ears of corn in whose sight I shall find grace. And it, we saw last lesson that it was important for Ruth to go and glean in a field where she would be allowed to glean. Remember, gleaning was a very humbling work. And if you were seen gleaning, then you would be uh, looked upon as being a poor person. It was a very humble uh, work to do, but it was needed for those who were poor in order to survive and to live. So Ruth, uh, she goes out and she, uh, she wants to go and she wants to glean. And uh, uh, Naomi said, go my daughter. And, but she wanted to glean in a place where she'd find grace, where she would be allowed to glean where farmers wouldn't be uh, selfish and uh, shooing away the gleaner so that they could have the profit. So now we see in verse 3, And she went and she came and she gleaned after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Now it says here, her hap. <laughs> in, the, in the King James Version, it says, her hat. And the Hebrew word for this is that it means a chance or a fortune or a chance event. So, although we see a number of events in this book of Ruth that seem to happen by chance, Yet the overriding theme of this book is God's providence as seen in all the happen chances. The Bible is filled with seemingly happen chances for people. But ultimately, it reveals that God was directing the situation the whole time. So the book of Ruth, we're seeing it as a book of in a sense, as things that happen by chance. And this is one of them. She went out to glean, and, and, and she really did not know that she was going to Boaz's field. She just went out, and she started, saw this field, and saw some reapers out there, and started gleaning. And I guess she asked, uh, she asked if she could glean, and I guess they said it was all right. And, uh, she started gleaning and uh, oh, just happened to be <laughs> just happened to be Boaz's field. And uh, we have to see this as the hand of God in this whole situation. You know, the discerning Christian, I'm sorry, to the discerning Christian, God reveals himself in the happen chances, the so-called coincidences, of our life. Sometimes, if you've been a Christian for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about, is that we see sometimes things that are we consider to be a coincidence, and yet to the mature Christian, they understand that God, God is, is directing our life, and that in a sense there are no coincidences, but it's the hand of God in these seemingly happen chances, right? A phone call to pray with you at just the right time, a loan of money, getting a job or a place to live at just the right time. And we say, boy, wasn't that a coincidence, right? Wasn't that a coincidence that this, that this $100 came to me uh, at just the time that I needed it. Wasn't it a coincidence that that so-and-so called 
and 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 asked how I was and 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 they wanted to pray with me. No, 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 no coincidence. It was the hand of God working in your life and working in their life also. <clears throat> we think we just happened upon it. But God was guiding us the whole way. In Psalm 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Psalm 119, verses, verse 133, order my steps in thy word. Order my steps in thy word. And in Job 14, Verse 16, for now you number my steps. Do you not watch over my sin? God numbers our steps. And in Job 31 and verse 4, it says, does not he, does not he see my ways and what? And count and count all my steps. Listen. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, God, God has the number for every step you've taken in your life. You may say, that's, that's, that's outrageous. That's, that's too, <laughs> why would God do it? I don't know. I don't know. But God said he numbers our steps. When you get to heaven, you can ask him exactly how many steps you've taken. He'll tell you if it's important at that time. <laughs> If you get to heaven and you think that it's important to know that, uh, then you can ask it. He, he knows the number. The Bible says he knows every hair on your head. He counts them, right? Why is that important? What does that, what does knowing the number of the hairs on, on our head have to do with eternal things of salvation and grace and righteousness and holiness, right? What, what, that's just such a, such a, a, a menial thing. Why would God want to know that? I mean, that has nothing to do with, with, the, with doctrines of, of salvation, the doctrine of tongues, the doctrine of, of the, the, the second coming of Christ. I mean, knowing the number of hairs on our head, that's just a waste of time, right? <laughs> that's what we think. God knows it. I'm telling you, God knows it. He knows the number of hairs on your head. The Bible also says he knows every he knows the number of every step you've ever taken in your life. How often do we start the day praying that God will guide us and our and guide us and order our steps? You pray in the morning, God guide. We when we know he does, but we we pray that God guide me, order my steps today guide me wherever, you know, to protect me and use me for your glory. But we say, it's just, it's just another Tuesday. We go to work, we go home, we eat supper, and we go to bed. That's what we do. It's just, it's just another Tuesday. It's just Thursday, right? Thursday. What do we do? Well, we, we do this and that and the other thing. We've been doing it for the last 10 years. But we really don't know all the things that could happen. Listen, we don't understand all the things that could happen in our life. All the dangers that didn't happen. Why? Because God directed our path. We think it's just another Tuesday. Yeah, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go to work, do my job, drive home, eat dinner, watch a little TV and go to bed. Yeah, just another boring Tuesday, but behind it, behind it, you know, you may not understand all the things that God was protecting you from that day. Car accidents, right? Different things. You, you have no idea all the things that God was protecting you from that day. And you just see it as a boring Tuesday, <laughs> right? But God was there leading us, ordering our steps. As we mature in Christ, we will not think of anything as being insignificant. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6 says, 
in all. How, how many? In all. What? In all. All. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. That's right. You're going to you're going shopping uh, after you listen to this this video, or you're going to the uh, get get food or whatever. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. All thy ways doesn't say in some ways. No, it says all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct thy path. You honor him. You love him. You serve him. You pray to him, to God, order my steps. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, honor him, love him, serve him, and he, he'll direct your path. He'll, he'll protect you. He'll lead you. Right? Now, verse 4 says, And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Now, this is the kind of relationship that a saved employer should have with his employees. It also reveals the integrity with which Boaz conducted his business. Remember, Boaz was what? The son of a harlot. The son of, he was the son of a Canaanite. Rahab was his, was his mother. But he was an honorable man. He loved God and he, he served God and he served God and he, he, he dealt with integrity with his workers. He always put God between himself and his workers. You know, even though we may work or associate with believers from different denominations, with somewhat different beliefs on some subjects, they are still our brothers or sisters in Christ. You may work with someone who's a Christian, but they go to uh, a different church than yours, and they believe differently about the gift of tongues, or about giving, or about baptism, or about whatever. And uh, look, they're still your brother or sister in Christ. We don't reject them because they don't agree with us on uh, what baptism is or what this is, you know. No, they're still our brother or our sister in Christ. We shouldn't reject them because they have different beliefs on tongues or missions, right? Or the second coming of Christ. Is it pre-trib, post-trib, what trib, right? No. Well, he believes in, he believes in post-trib. I don't believe that. I'm not, I'm not going to associate with him, you know. <laughs> he, hey, when the, uh, you're, you're going to spend eternity with him. He's, he's your brother or your sister in Christ. And you're going to be spending eternity with them in heaven forevermore. Right? So here's Boaz. And, and I love this. He says, and Boaz came from Bethlehem. And he probably had some business and his fields were probably outside of Bethlehem, just around the outskirts of Bethlehem. So he says he came from Bethlehem and he said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. God bless you, right? Well, if you have a saved, if you're, if you're a business owner and you have people that, that are saved and, and work for you, you know what, just, just, you know what, God bless you. Go say that to them. Just just give them some kind of a greeting that that turns their heart to God and and he, the Lord be with you and they answered and they said the Lord bless thee now, I know it sounds so <laughs> not 21st century right <laughs> or 20th century it doesn't sound doesn't sound like that today but you know maybe maybe we need to deal a little bit more with integrity and, and to honor people, uh, honor our brothers or sisters that we work with or our bosses and to keep the Lord. It's important to always keep the Lord between you and your boss, you and your workers, right? You and your co-worker. Keep the Lord between you. And if you do, I'm telling you, if you honor with integrity your workers and 
and you keep the Lord between you, God will bless you. God will bless you. All right. Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.